Hey guys, so today I wanted to talk less about a specific tutorial, although I will end with a tutorial, and more about an idea that permeates what we do here at Authentic Movements. Authentic Movements is the yoga and movement school that I share with Erin Kelly and Bianca Scalise, and we have a lot of aspects that run through, including create. Uh, creative sequencing, heavy use of strength and conditioning, functional anatomy, uh, and the use of what we call pose mimics. And this is something that may seem obvious, but a pose mimic is going to be something that resembles the peak posture or the posture that you're working up to in one way, shape, or form, or maybe a few. It doesn't have to look exactly like it. In fact, it should be somewhat different. And typically, pose mimics are more accessible on one or a variety of levels. And if you're practicing for yourself on your own, a pose mimic is going to give you the opportunity to warm up the shape of your peak posture a little bit more, to perhaps drill in some carry through cues or cues that are really important to your peak but that you should be visiting beforehand in your practice. And even if you're not, again, taking a public class or teaching one, you can still be thinking about cues internally as you're practicing. And if you're teaching a class, then all those things still apply, right? Warming up the body more, giving yourself these, this place or giving your students a place to experience these carry through cues. But in, in addition, you're also essentially providing some hopefully more accessible modifications for the peak posture. Because if you've ever been in those yoga classes where you're working towards a peak, and let's say the peak is side crow for today, uh, and then the teacher spends, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes of a 45 minute or 60 minute class demonstrating and going through the peak posture because they're going through so many modifications, well, you're likely not even going to remember half the cues that she did or the steps that she did, as well as all those varieties. However, if you practice those modifications through a variety of mimic postures during the class, then as a teacher, you have a lot less to say as a demo because they've already done it. They've already gone through those carry through cues and hopefully your students will already have that available to them. They'll already feel safe and secure in those postures or at least more safe and secure, right? And they'll feel like they have some options without necessarily having to take too many steps back because that can be a big thing in yoga class too. We wanna to feel like we're progressing or some of us do, right? So a peak, we encourage you to think about where you're going, and again, let's say it's side crow for today, and then deconstruct it and also start flipping it around. So if we're thinking about side crow, which is a fairly advanced arm balance and it has a deep twist, it's going to have the aspect of arm balancing, right? Uh, it's going to have this idea of adduction or hugging to the midline of the legs, perhaps depending on the variety we're doing some kind of hamstring activation or curl to get the heels closer to the sit bones, probably protraction of the shoulder blades so we're pushing down, a little bit of tricep wrap, external rotation of the upper arm bone, maybe a micro bend, a lot of wrist flexion, right? There's, there's a lot of things going on, um, or wrist extension, sorry. Um, there's a lot of things going on in this posture. It's a little tricky. We're in wrist extension, right? But we're working towards flexion as we claw our fingertips into the ground. So um, let's start by just knocking this posture on its side. Because when we think about these mimic poses, we also want to think about what's a reasonable order to put them in. So a lot of people begin a class on their back, you might do some gentle twisting, you may do some light core warm-ups on your back body or maybe even seated, right? Because you can get a little bit deeper there, whatever it is you're doing, maybe you keep the legs together to be a little bit more of a mimic. But a mimic for something like side crow may simply be reclined side crow, right? You could set up this posture fairly easily on the back body, it's still gonna be an intense posture. This idea of hugging the legs together, depending on what you want your students or yourself to do with your legs. You would come into the twist, hugging the knees together. You could even reach for the sky. You could focus on that connection of the triceps to the outer thigh. You could focus on the push up towards the sky, the firm extension of the wrist, and then the clawing of the fingertips as we work again towards flexion. You can push, you could do some pulses here, trying to get the knees closer towards the armpit. So there's a 
simple mimic there, which is still going to be hard depending on what you're doing in it, right? Especially as you incorporate breath. Just moving it up one level, we could take this into a mimic of a twisted chair. Maybe we do, or not, sorry, twisted boat or twisted navasana pose, hugging the knees again together. You could have people squeeze a block if they wanted to level that up, right? They could squeeze a block between their elbows. Again, you could have all kinds of pulsing. You could have back and forth here, drilling through the same kind of cues that you did on your back body. Where else could you do this? Something that we often do do when we're practicing our side crow is we'll take this after we've gotten done appropriate warm-ups. We'll take this into something like our twisted chair. Maybe this time instead of keeping our arms here or here, we're actually mimicking the posture. You can even hug that block right between your forearms. You could do anything here moving back and forth with the block hugging between your forearms. That would be fun. Although I have a different definition of fun than most people. But what I want to focus on here is just this idea that you can put mimics everywhere and they don't have to look exactly like the posture, right? Those three items that we just did, the reclined side crow, the twisted chair and the twisted boat, they pretty much look a lot, a lot, a lot like side crow. But we could take pieces of it, perhaps the twist and the hugging of the knees together and you could work that into something simple because it's easy to throw in these mimics in different places like I just showed you. What gets harder but also is a great way to showcase, showcase intricate sequencing and an understanding of how much work you have to put in to get to these peak postures is the ability to sequence some major aspects of them into the more common postures like downward facing dog or lunge and things like that. Because we see those all the time in yoga classes and why not utilize them, right? So even in something like a down dog, how could we utilize aspects of side crow? Well, you may bring your feet closer together, hug your knees towards the midline. Again, someone could bite a block between their upper thighs. You may shift the knees from side to side. Maybe the next time you go through downward facing dog, you let your students take a little hop to the outside of their leg, back, hop, and back. Maybe the third time you go through downward facing dog, it's a hop a placing of the knees on the tricep, a leaning and a shifting and a coming to the toes while gripping with the fingers. All the time, not really focusing on the peak posture necessarily. They're not going into it and I would even cue like, we're not going into side crow here. This is just preparing us, right? But it's a way to start to introduce all of these cues into your work. And then finally, when you get to the peak posture, they've heard a lot of it before. They've heard the peak poses of hands, shoulder distance apart, deep twist, fingertips pointing the same direction as the toes, legs hugging towards the midline, heels curling in towards the sit bones, fingertips gripping the earth, pushing the ground away. So I did promise you a tutorial for side curl, so I'll do it here. And I'm actually going to face you this way because what we often see in something like side curl, and you might have noticed when I was doing those hopping motions, I was trying to get my feet mostly pointing towards the direction of my fingers as well because what we tend to see in side crow is we come into a twist and we face our fingertips perpendicular towards our toes and then this back elbow is just leaning on my hip which means my back shoulder is dropping and then whoopsies I come to the floor and I'm like you know what I just meant to do a fallen angel that's fine there's nothing wrong innately with hugging that back arm in as a kickstand there is nothing wrong with that specifically. What tends to happen though for most of us is if we do that, that back shoulder is gonna roll under and dip in. We might end up putting a little bit more pressure on the bicep tendon or just not necessarily being able to be in the most stable position. This is technically a one arm arm balance. Again, if you can do that variation without necessarily dropping or dipping in that back shoulder, good, great, go for it. But maybe you wanna try this new variation just for fun. And that is the fingertips face in the same direction of the toes. So we come into the twist first. Not really worrying about if the knees come apart because we can fix those together. I like side body length first and then an exhale, shoo, taking the twist. Working all the way down towards my armpit. Remember at this point I'm pretty warm. I've been doing a lot of these mods already. This is probably during the peak demonstration of the class, whether it's 45, 60, 75 minutes, 90 minutes, whatever. Then this hand faces the same direction as my toes. I know it's crazy. This hand 
reaches across, shoulder distance apart, slightly turned out, which my students know already because we've been doing it the whole time, right? Shift the weight. This also forces me to shift the weight into my hands, which is the scary part for a lot of people, right? Claw the earth with my fingertips, puff up through the back body, hug my knees together now, and then it's the bottom foot that kicks up into the top foot to lift me off the ground. Clawing the earth with the fingertips, pushing up through the back of the heart, hug the elbows in, curl the heels in towards the sit bone. If this foot wants to stay down, fine. If both feet want to stay down, fine. Still making the shape and still getting all the benefit of the posture. Going up on an inhale or an exhale, your choice, just keep breathing. But anyway, side curl is just a little added benefit. I know a lot of you guys do home practices and you're working towards certain postures as well as those out there who are teachers. Just wanted to give you a little, little information about how authentic movement starts to think about these peak poses and break them down in fun and creative ways. We have some funky flows coming in our online subscription program, which should be out on June 1st. And we also have some current packages on AuthenticMovements.com. You can also join us in person, hopefully soon, once these uh, travel bans and things have been lifted for our 200 and 300 hour trainings and our 50 hour intensives. Thanks for joining me today, guys.